Your workflow is a very important yet very underrated factor when it comes to making music. Having a solid workflow really makes it so much easier to get those little ideas that are up in your noggin out of there and make them a reality when the inspiration strikes. If your workflow is not the most optimal for you, it's going to be much harder for you to create cool stuff and make good music because you're not operating as efficiently as you could be. It's really easy to get into bad workflow habits and just accidentally create a workflow for yourself that is not efficient or optimal at all. So today, I'm going to show you all how to create the perfect music production workflow for you. So first things first, your ideas have to start somewhere. A lot of producers just sit down in front of the computer, open up their DAW, start clicking around, making chord progressions until inspiration strikes, and that's a perfectly fine method. I do that a lot of times as well. However, what about when inspiration strikes, but you can't exactly do that? Let's say you get a specific idea for a song or a beat, but you're nowhere near your computer or your instruments or anything like that. It's really important to have some way to document your ideas wherever and whenever. And this could simply mean using the Notes app on your phone. At least on iPhone, there's a feature where you can press the little camera icon and you can record a video of whatever your idea is right there. I also use Notion for a lot of stuff. There's a mobile app and there's also a computer website version. It's far better on the computer, but having it on your phone is nice just in case you get a little spark of inspiration here or there. And if you want to go with the old school method, like I personally like doing, bring a little notebook with you wherever you go. Music notes, music journal, whatever you want to call it, and just use that to write down any ideas for lyrics or song structure or chord progressions or anything like that that you have while you're out and about. And you could honestly just use it to write down any bit of inspiration that you get throughout the day. Let's say your phone dies or something like that. You still always got your handy dandy pen and paper. You'd be surprised how many more ideas you come up with when you start putting pen to paper. Something about it just gets your brain kind of moving and coming up with ideas much better. The way that I like to think of it, and many people have said this before, but ideas are not really like yours or mine or anybody's. They don't belong to anybody. It's kind of like they're all just floating in this stream of subconscious and you just happen to, you know, reel one in here and there. And you're like, oh, this is my now but if you don't grab it and you don't reel it in somebody else is going to grab that idea and do something with it later on down the line it's like fishing Think of it like fishing. If you don't catch that big old monster largemouth bass, some guy downstream is going to catch it and you're going to miss out on what could have been yours. So that's why it's so important to have something to capture those ideas right when they hit you. Otherwise, you're going to lose them. But when we're talking about the real basics of building a workflow, you really just have to build everything off of the main steps of your process. So if my process is generally recording and then mixing and then laying out the beat and then mastering, that's what I'm going to build everything around. But maybe somebody else doesn't record instruments and they mix the beat while they're actually making it. It's important to remember that everybody's workflow is going to be totally different and even your own workflow is going to vary a little bit every time you make music. There's no way you're going to do the same exact thing in the same exact order every time. So make sure you build a good foundation for your workflow by establishing the big steps of the process before we go into any of the smaller details. Just try new things and experiment a little bit and over time you're going to build up a sense of what you like, what you don't like, and what works pretty good for your workflow. So let's say you got an idea, you're inspired, you're ready to get into your DAW and start making some music. If you open up your DAW, you put your soft clipper on your master, you open up this plugin and this plugin, you scroll through your drum folder for like 15 minutes looking for drums, and now you're uninspired again. One of the most important pieces of workflow advice that I can give you is to utilize templates and presets. It will save you so much time so much time. In most DAWs out there, you should be able to create templates for your projects. What I noticed a long time ago was that I was opening up a blank project every time and then loading up the same plugins. I would load up a soft clipper or a limiter. I would pull up these specific drum sounds or mess with these settings. And then common sense eventually smacked me in the face and was like, hey dude, you probably could save a lot of time if you didn't have to do this every time you opened a project. So I basically just adjusted all the settings that I wanted to have set for when I opened any project ever. I made a template out of that and now that's just what I open anytime I want a new project. This is absolutely massive when it comes to recording drums. I have eight microphones on this bad boy. That's going to be eight mixer tracks that I have to individually set up and click every single time, put the different EQs and compressors on each one of them, load up all of the six or seven different effects that I have on the drum bus. Doing just that right there takes like 25 minutes as it is. But after I made a preset that has all that stuff set up for me, it now only takes me like 45 seconds to start recording drums. Any plugin where you're doing the same settings every time or process where you're setting it up the same way, just make a preset for those things and it's going to save you a ton of time. So another thing you really have to be conscious about when it comes to your music production workflow is how everything is set up. This can be everything from the files on your computer to the actual gear that's in your studio. Make sure that everything you need or want to use on a regular basis is convenient and easily accessible. If certain things are buried away and not easily accessible, you're not going to use it as much. Out of sight, out of mind, so they say. 
It's true. I've heard him say that before. For example, take a look at these instruments right here. Take a guess at which one I use the least. If you guessed this glockenspiel that is literally buried behind this guitar stand in between the keyboard, you'd be correct. I rarely ever use that thing, and the sole reason is because it's impossible to get to. I have it in like the most inconvenient spot ever. But if I had it sitting right next to me or in a spot where I could easily get to it, I'm sure I would use it so much more. So that's why you have to consciously set up and design your studio in a way that works the best for you and the type of music that you make. If I didn't use a whole lot of drums and guitar and bass and stuff like that, they wouldn't be so prevalent within my studio setup. One thing that I did a long time ago when I first started music production, I made a folder of drum sounds that I use the most, just like my favorite drum sounds. Make sure that you put an exclamation point or some sort of special character at the beginning of the file name. That way it'll push it all the way to the top of your drum kits folder. And you don't have to fumble around with opening 700 different folders to find the drum sound that you like using. If you're spending so much time looking through folders on your computer, that's time wasted where you could be converting inspiration into something cool. When it comes to actually setting up your studio and putting everything where you want it to be, the small details can actually make a huge difference. Everybody thinks the huge studio desk or some monitor stand, this thing or that thing is going to be the big thing that you need for your studio. But the little stuff is what really matters. The life hacks, if you will. The devil's in the details. <laughs> if you will. Exhibit A. Notice how my computer and keyboard and everything is right in front of me, as it probably should be. And my MIDI keyboard is here on the left because when I'm scrolling, clicking through presets, I'm using my right hand here to click with the mouse, type on the keyboard and whatnot, and my left hand is pressing the key so I can hear what preset I'm clicking through. If I had my keyboard on the right side, I'd be going like this while clicking through presets, which is super weird and inefficient and uncomfortable. All of which are things that you don't want your music production workflow to be. Notice how I have... <laughs> Notice how I have this microphone stand attached to my desk. You might be thinking to yourself, well that makes sense because this guy makes content and sometimes he's gotta use both hands while holding the microphone, but this actually serves more than one purpose. I'll often use this microphone to record guitars or other instruments right from my desk without having to go over to some specified recording area. You can easily go from talking away, chatting it up on the microphone, to boom, recording guitar. I can even put it all the way up and I can stand and talk or record vocals. I'd recommend everybody get one of these even if you don't make content. And exhibit C, this actually saves me so much time. I keep a Bluetooth wireless mouse over by the drum set and I use it to press record or hit undo or mute certain tracks when I'm recording drums from basically 15 feet away from my computer. Also, don't get things for your studio that you just literally don't need or you're not gonna use. A lot of people will just watch like an Andrew Huang tutorial, for example, and be like, oh, he uses this microphone or this guitar. I'm gonna buy the same one because that's what he uses. When it comes to making in music, the gear that you use is definitely not a one-size-fits-all thing. What works really good for somebody else might totally not work for you. Also, when you think about it, somebody who's only recording, let's say, guitar and bass is going to have a totally different setup from somebody who's an engineer, for example. Just having clutter and a bunch of random gear that you never use in your studio never helped anybody. That's only going to make it much harder to actually get your ideas out and flow better. A lot of times, your outward environment is a reflection of your inward mind, mental self, or whatever. If you got clutter on the outside, all around you, then you're probably going to have clutter up here too. A really big part of making your workflow the best that it can possibly be is figuring out where the problems are and then solving them. So having more gear is definitely not always better and I would not recommend just buying more music gear in hopes that you'll make better music, but I do recommend consciously buying gear that suits your music and your workflow. Think of the little examples that I just gave you of the microphone stand and the Bluetooth mouse. Those are examples of little tiny things that you can buy that'll help your workflow so much. But you have to genuinely take a step back and assess what are the problems that you keep running into to what are little things that are slowing you down when you're making music, what parts of your process could be faster and more streamlined, and then use your noggin, use your noodle, to, f to figure out solutions to those problems. Problem solving is just a great skill to have in life, but also when you're making music as well. Another thing that I found is that having posters or books or drawings or computer backgrounds of information that you use frequently is really, really helpful. Next to my computer, I actually keep a little paper with a circle of fifths on it. And there are practically infinite different ways that you can use this. Guitar chord charts or guitar like fretboard notes, DAW shortcuts or mixing and music theory cheat sheets. The list is pretty much endless. You can find a diagram or a post 
poster of pretty much anything. Keeping a couple music books on your desk or posters right next to where you work, it makes that valuable information so much easier to access for you. Another thing you should really do is actually organize the files on your computer in an efficient way. Probably my first like 70 to 80 beats were all just called Hot Beat 1, Hot Beat 2, Hot Beat 3. Fun fact, the reason I actually did that was because in the video where H3 makes a song with Post Malone, he makes a little beat and he calls it Hot Beat 1. I'm gonna call this one Hot Beat number one because I know that you're about to make so many more hot beats. <laughs> I saw that video right around the time that I started making beats and I was like, okay, we're making hot beats now. But I know a lot of you guys name your beats by just slamming on your computer or like calling it what you ate for dinner or whatever, which I'm sure works for some people. But the way that works best for me is to just make up some random name for the beat. Generally, I try to make it a word that is somewhat related to the mood of the beat. And then I'll just put the BPM and sometimes I'll put the key, but honestly, not very often. Some people go pretty psychotic with this and put like the mood of the beat and put like a whole description of what it sounds like and all that kind of stuff. And I think that's a little bit much. You can just put a title BPM key if you want to. If they're not organized in an efficient way and they don't really have proper names, it's just gonna make it way harder to actually finish the beats that you start. And it's gonna make it much harder when you look back on your beats years or months from now to actually find the beat that you're looking for. The way that I organize my beats within the folder is I have the year, and then I have each month within the year. And then within those folders, I have a folder for project files and I have a folder for finished MP3 files. If you make a lot of samples and you have a folder for that, I would recommend organizing them by mood or by genre or something like that, where you can easily be like, I want a dark trap sample. Click on this folder and now you have a bunch of dark trap samples. A minor tip here that I have that might not apply to everybody, but it's really good for like type beat channels is creating upload defaults. Every time you upload a beat, having to type in Travis Scott type beat, name of the beat produced by your name and then going into the tags and having to type out all the Travis Scott type beat, Travis Scott, Travis Scott Usher World type beat, Travis Scott Usher World. It's so time consuming. It's so much work. Save yourself the trouble and make yourself some upload defaults on YouTube. So hopefully by now you've created a pretty decent workflow or at least gotten some inspiration for how you can make your workflow just a little bit better. It's important to remember that your workflow is always going to be changing and developing as you grow as a person and a musician in general. Your studio setup and the way you make music is kind of just like an ever changing thing. It's never going to be officially done. You're never going to get to a point where you're like, all right, this is it. I'm never changing anything else. It's perfect how it is. And also you got to remember that you have to work within the confines of what's available to you as well. You might only have like a three by three broom closet to set up your studio in, but that's all right. It's just going to provide you with a better opportunity to make that studio set up uniquely your own. As long as you're making cool music and as long as you're enjoying yourself while you're doing it, that's really all that matters here. So that is just about going to do it for me in this video here today. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you all for watching. I hope your music production workflow is even just marginally better after watching this video. Also, real quick, you guys know I don't say this too often in my videos, but make sure that you subscribe because because me and my good friend Coleman, who most of you know as Zol, we're doing a little bit of a challenge. We're trying to reach 100,000 subscribers with both of our channels combined by the end of this year. And if we reach that goal, we're gonna be doing a non-stop live stream where we can't end the stream until we make an album that you guys are gonna help us create. But if we fail, if we fail, we are both gonna have to shave our heads. So make sure you subscribe. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Instagram and all the other social media stuff is down in the description below, and I will see you all next time.